Migraine is considered a disease like any other. It is considered a, a disease that causes excruciating, throbbing, pulsing, crushing head pain. And often it can be uh, accompanied with nausea, vomiting, dizziness, an aura like seeing stars or seeing lines or seeing something wavy coming in on one side or the other. Sometimes a migraine can hurt one side of the head or the other, or the whole head is pulsating and throbbing. So all this talk about CGRP, what is it? It stands for calcitonin gene-related peptide. It's a tiny messenger in your body that helps control how blood vessels behave and how pain signals travel in your brain. So when you talk, all these new migraine medications are aimed at decreasing the CGRP because um, it has been shown that people with a migraine have a tremendous amount of CGRP that has been pushed out. So that makes sense to decrease that. Well, how does CGRP cause a migraine? Stress or triggers wake it up. When you're stressed, your brain releases CGRP as part of its reaction. Blood vessels then get big. CGRP makes the blood vessels in your head widen or dilate too much. Nerve pain signals go crazy. So the CGRP makes nerve pain nerves extra sensitive. So you feel more pain. Swelling and again more pain. The widening and nerve activity cause inflammation, making your head throb and pulse. If ever you ride in an elevator with an a migraine, you're feeling that difference coming down or up on the floors and you're going to feel the pulsation increase or decrease. Same idea like if you are exerting more pressure or energy with your blood pressure, maybe going up a little with exercise. But with extreme emotional or physical stress, CGRP pumps out more, causing more pain. I want to tell you what happened to me the other day. So three days ago, I had a surprise emotional event. You know, they talk a, a lot in the how to prevent a migraine and how to prevent this instant onset crushing migraine that just, just comes out of nowhere during an emotional or physical event or an instantaneous uh, sensation of fear or, you know, it's that whole fight or flight reaction. It has to do with a lot of chemicals and, and emotions all wrapped up and hormones and so forth. But a few days ago, but you can't, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't always see it coming. You can't always avoid it. There's just so much information out there about avoiding it. Like, here, take this, take magnesium as a supplement. This is not what I'm telling you to do. Please speak with your doctor or your neurologist. I'm just telling you that if you read information about what helps migraines or prevents migraines or chronic headaches, you might see a lot of this. Magnesium. I already take magnesium. How about the B2s? I already take B2. What about the CoQ10? I already take CoQ10 too. I got chewables, cherry flavor, 3,000. This is my dose. That might not mean it's your dose. I take this too, CoQ10, 100 milligrams. I take this every single day. Actually, I take two of them. All right. Okay, you're going to read about fish oil. This is what was recommended for me. It would be different for you. Again, speak with your own provider. I'm just showing you what I take. And I take three of these a day. I take a lot of supplements. All of them, I'm aiming the supplements towards overall health, but benefits for a migraine. And then I already have a medication that I can take eight tablets a month. That's all you can take of a CGRP um, inhibitor. So then I take one of these eight times a month. Then I take an injection of a CGRP uh, inhibitor injection one time a month. So, oh, and I always drink water. Tons of water. I'm not dehydrated. So what I'm trying to say is that we could be doing all of the right things. We could be taking all of the right supplements and medications correctly and exercise and eating right and being conscientious about sleep and, you know, good health and being mindful of to stay out of stressful events. But sometimes it happens. And so we have to think about what, what can we do to take care of ourselves? We're, we're doing our best to avoid situations that are going to cause turmoil in our lives. Unfortunate news, war, the death of somebody, a crash that you're involved in. Somebody in front of you has had a traumatic event right before your eyes. So you're experiencing this. But in my situation, it was with my sister. So when I look at this one really great article about instantaneous crushing migraines that come on fast and are throbbing right away. Now, I'm not talking about a thunderclap migraine. I'm just telling you how a migraine can come on. And it says right here, 
your boss in the article. It does talk about exercise and how exercise, strenuous exercise, can sometimes lead to headaches. Sudden release of those stress hormones, the fight or flight response that we talked about, intense emotional or physical stress can trigger an instant migraine due to a combination of neurological, vascular, and hormonal responses. Well, in my case, it would say my sister, your sister. It's not just your boss. So in my case, it was my sister and we got into an argument and the argument escalated. And um, she was even trying to push me out the door, basically, get me out the door of our mother's home. And I was not going to be pushed out the door. I'm my mom's primary caregiver. But that's how, kind of what started it. And me assuming wrongly that because it's her mother too, I assumed she wanted to, she only visits periodically, but I assumed she wanted to help me or alleviate some of the workload for me or um, help her mother. This is her mother too. And apparently that made her really uncomfortable that I would ask her to do anything out of her comfort zone, which is pretty much everything. So the argument escalated and within probably five minutes of this confrontation, this intense emotional confrontation, what's going on back there? I instantly, instantly developed a crushing, throbbing migraine. I've had this one other time in my life, and it was about five years ago after the death of somebody. I was there as a uh, hospice assistant. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm not high. I wasn't hired. I was, this was family. And so I talked to my neurologist at that time about the incident. She explained to me what it was, and then she prescribed a medication for me that you can take on the go. It's a powder. Just take it quick. It works quick. But my insurance company denied it. Haven't we all been there? Even with an appeal, insurance company still denied it. So I didn't have anything like that again until just the other day. I had another one of those. It was all I could do to hold my head and get to my car where I knew I had these two things. My Nurtec, that's what I take for acute migraines, and my Advil. And coffee helps me. Again, again, I always have to say the disclaimer, this is just what works for me, but it didn't work. Anyway, that's why I'm going back to my neurologist to talk about the new medication that I'm going to mention. I took the Nurtec, I took a few Advil, I drank more water. After about 10 minutes, I was able to drive, but my head continued to pound for another 30 hours, and I took enough medication and other things to keep knocking it down a little bit, but it would come right back up within a couple of hours. So this is what a migraine is. This is what a type of migraine is. The release of all the chemicals, the changes in hormones that are going on, the instantaneous pain set on by, started by an emotional event. It can be physical, and it takes a long time for it to go away in my case, but the new medication that's out, Simbravo, is something that really sounds appealing and interesting to me. And I am excited to talk to my neurologist about it and hopefully get a prescription that my insurance company will cover. I have two insurance companies. It seems to not matter. Uh, they're going to pick and choose as they do on what medication they think that you need. Remember, the world of medicine revolves around insurance companies. It doesn't revolve around doctors or nurses. And I know most people know that now, but I can tell you in the hospital, Lots of patients can get quite upset because they're thinking that the doctor is at fault for certain things. And it's really that the insurance company is not authorizing specific things or not allowing you to stay another day. It has nothing to do with the provider. Anyway, that's a whole nother video, isn't it? Okay, you guys, so let's get started. What in the world is this new medication that's out? It's kind of like Treximet, but it's called Simbravo. It sounds really promising. It's used for acute onset migraines, not daily for prevention. That's my cat, Kevin, playing with a new toy. He loves it. <laughs> and we got Noah there as always. So Simbravo has the same idea going on where it has two medications, one's an NSAID combined with a tryptan. So the NSAID in Simbravo happens to be meloxicam and resitriptan. But remember years ago, Treximet came out and Treximet also had that combination going on of an NSAID and a tryptan, only it had naproxen and sumatriptan. When you read about the two of these, which one does better by far at this time, Simbravo seems to be the superior one of the two. How you take Simbravo is it's one pill. And um, the information that I read said there's nothing out yet about 
taking another, when to take a second one. Uh, but one pill and the onset is when of the migraine is when you want to take it. And as quickly as 30 minutes, uh, people have felt relief. Some do not feel relief uh, for another hour or two. It keeps the migraine away longer than Treximet, according to the studies. So an NSAID helps with inflammation. And the triptans are an interesting medication that's been out a very long time where people, I remember years ago getting prescribed a triptan for migraines. But for me personally, it did not work at all. Triptans never worked for me. They never took a headache or a migraine away. Um, but the triptan is supposed to decrease the, decrease the release of CGRP. And it's known that CGRP is a big factor. High levels are a big factor that gets, you know, in migraine pain. So CGRP is getting pushed out at the, you know, at the time of a migraine attack. So that's why a lot of these new medications out for migraines are trying to decrease the CGRP. CGRP is also uh, supposed to be constricting blood vessels. So you've got an anti-inflammatory, you've got a medication that is a tryptin that's working on the trigeminal nerve by decreasing the release of CGRP and constricting blood vessels. That's the idea. I have not tried it, but I really would like to try it, especially after the last migraine episode I had a couple days ago. Sembravo is considered an abortive medication, not a daily preventative medication. It That means that you take it at onset of the migraine. It is supposed to stop, abort the migraine pain. That's the idea of it. Again, it's just one pill. People who have four to eight migraines a month and can take oral medication are candidates for it, among other things that you have to talk to your neurologist about. As I said, it's a single dose. You can take it with or without food, so that makes it convenient. It can cause some minor side effects that have been listed. Okay, I hope this was informative. If anybody who's had who has tried this medication or even tried Treximet in the, in the past. Let me know. I'm really interested if this has worked for you. I'll be talking to my neurologist about this because I need something to stop the migraine at onset. So I'm gonna ask her about this and I'll follow up with you.